Have you ever heard the expression, misery loves company? Well, unfortunately, it's true. There are some people who are just unhappy and difficult people, and we have to deal with them sometimes. How in the world are we expected to maintain our happy selves when we are confronted with difficult people? Well, that's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. So I hope that you will stay tuned. In this video, we're not going to be focusing on difficult or annoying people that you just happen to bump into while you're standing in the checkout line at Walmart. I'm talking about people that you actually have a relationship with. How do we deal with people that are difficult, um, that are going to be in our lives that we have a relationship with? Either a work relationship, um, a familial relationship, a loving lover partner relationship, when they're being difficult, that sort of difficult people and how to deal with those things. Now, of course, as a relationship coach, I want you to always be evaluating your relationships at any given time to know where this particular person lies on the spectrum of importance in your life. But I realize that that's not always the case. So I'll explain quickly, briefly, what I mean by evaluating. If we're constantly evaluating our relationships, it helps us to focus on where we need to put our energy um, so if, for example, you take your next door neighbor, you probably don't have to spend a lot of time and energy and focus on them because it's, it's, it's more of a distance, uh, relationship and they're probably not doing a whole lot to contribute to your spiritual or emotional or financial growth. And, um, but if the person that we're talking about is your boss and you rely on them for your source of income, you're going to want to make a resolution. You know, if you have an annoying or nosy neighbor, it's easy to emotionally distance yourself from them, right? But not so much from your boss, whom you're probably gonna spend quite a bit of time with during any given week. Um, likewise, your lover or your spouse or your partner, you're going to need to invest a lot of time and energy in building and maintaining that relationship. Likewise, your children. Uh, family, it's going to depend on the distance, things like that. So it's good to know where you need to be putting your energy um, and, and, and focus in your life. How much energy are you going to put into the method? Now, for any relationship, here's the good news. What you need to do when you're trying to deal with difficult people is set boundaries. Now, we all have our own core beliefs, right? We all have our own sets of values and principles and morals and things like that. But people are not mind readers. So people are not going to know where your boundaries lie unless you're very clear and tell them what your boundaries are from the get-go. And so if you're not in the habit of setting boundaries at the beginning of relationships and someone does cross the line with you um, and does violate perhaps one of your core beliefs or your principles, um, then you can say, you know, in the past, this was okay, or this may be acceptable. But from here on out, I would like for you to fill in the blank. And they may say, well, it never bothered you before. The best response that you can offer is, that may be, but from here on out, I need X, Y, Z. Now, when you set your boundaries, you're going to make, need to make sure that you enforce those boundaries, okay? It's simple if you think of it in terms of children, right? If your children learn that your threats are just idle threats and that you're not going to follow through with them, then they're not, they're not going to follow your <laughs> boundaries and limits, right? And so you need to follow through with them, okay? And sometimes that can be difficult, but you just, you know, a friendly reminder never hurt anyone, especially if you realize that they're not doing it to be malicious, they're just, you know, not very self-aware, right? And so they cross that boundary, they've crossed it before, you've set the boundary, and you, and they cross it again. Enforce that boundary. All you have to do is remind them, 
you know, Gina, we've talked about this in the past. I do not allow myself to be talked to that way. And so if you need a minute or if, you know, if we need to, we can take a minute and um, reset, regroup and come back and discuss, finish discussing this later. That way you're enforcing your boundary. You're reminding them of the boundary and you're not making that person immediately react. You know, you're giving them the option if they're, in a state, an emotional state of, you know, heated elevation, then you're giving them an out. You're letting them reset, right? And it also gives you a moment to take a breath as well. So it's really a win-win situation. Now, let's say that the person that's a difficult person um, is a member of your church group or a women's group at your church, and she starts gossiping about another member at your church. If you try to just remove yourself from the situation and they're like, hey, where are you going? Or, you know, and, and want you to be a part of, you know, the drama that they're trying to create. You can simply say to them, you know, I do my best to avoid conflict and I really don't think I have anything to contribute to this conversation. So I'm just going to go get a cup of coffee, you know, and politely excuse yourself from that situation. That's super simple. What are they going to do? Say, no, no, no. We really want you to hear this juicy gossip. You know, um, you've set your boundary. You've told them, I don't have anything to contribute. I'm removing myself from the situation. And so you can be assertive with them without being, you know, tacky. In fact, they're going to, it's going to be more about, it's going to show more about them, really. Um, and you're the one who is taking the higher road and removing yourself from the situation. So you don't have to be embroiled in that. Now, keep in mind, you do not have to defend your boundaries. You can set the boundary, you know, identify your desired boundary and or behavior that you expect, okay, and make sure that you explain it in a way that they understand that this is a boundary, okay? So you want to be assertive, but you also want to, to remain calm and, and dignified, okay? And then you don't have to defend it, but you may want to explain why it's important to you. But just remember that you want to keep it simple, okay? And make sure you define a consequence if you need to. Okay, so I need to interrupt this to allow my beautiful granddaughter, my first grandbaby, <laughs> Ella, to make her first appearance on a YouTube video. Yeah, can you say hi? <laughs> Look at that little angel kiss chin. Is that not the most adorable thing you've ever seen? Hi, friends. Hi, friends. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. Okay, so back to difficult people. <laughs> Let's say you're in an office setting and the emotions start to rise. There's you know, some discussion between people and you can feel the mood and the tension starting to come up, okay? The first thing you want to do is remain calm. The last thing you want to do is to tell the people to remain calm. <laughs> because when we tell someone to remain calm, usually the exact opposite happens, right? And so be self-aware, be aware of the feelings, be aware of the emotions that are, that are coming up to the surface and the feelings that you are feeling in your body. Take a deep breath and try to listen to what's really being said. When people start to become very passionate in their talk, it's usually going to be because it's coming from a place of uncertainty or fear um, and so that person in the moment is usually experiencing something quite negative so if you will listen to what it is that they're truly trying to say not how you're going to respond to the situation but to what they're really trying to say sometimes you can find what it is that they need and if you are in a situation let's say you're one-on-one -on -one with someone and the mood the mood is elevating and it's going in a very negative direction. You, first of all, never say calm down. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm very serious about that because that is not the way to handle it. But find, listen to them, find out what it is that they want and then tell them, I want 
to help you get what you want. Now, you're going to be more specific than that, but you're going to fill in that blank of what they want with what they want, okay? Let's say you're having a dinner party, okay? And you have one of your guests that's refusing to, talk, to stop talking about politics, okay? And they're just being snippy and snipey towards another guest, okay? In that sort of situation, you can say, now, you don't want to say it in front of everybody, but you want to take that person one-on-one, -on -one, right? Um, and you want to say, you know, I want you to be comfortable in my home, and I enjoy having you here, but I cannot allow that to happen if you're going to be rude to another guest, okay? Um, an even better way to put it is just even simpler than that and just say, I want you to be comfortable in my home, but not at the expense of the feelings of my other guests. So I could go on all day <laughs> with specific examples. But the bottom line is when you're dealing with difficult people, you're going to want to set your boundaries. And the first thing you want to do is remain calm. Focus on your breathing. You want to tell your limbic system that everything is okay. And so by taking a nice deep breath, that's going to help your limbic system start to calm down and know that you don't have to, you know, freeze or fight, okay? Because the last thing you want to do is fight. If you're adding fuel to the fire, it's going to go nowhere. It's going to go downhill really fast, <clears throat> really fast. And so you don't want to go with them over that hill, over, <clears throat> excuse me, you don't want to go with them over that edge. And so your, your focus is to try to listen to what it is that they really want, what they're really trying to say, and you want to let them know that they're heard, that you do want to help them get what they want, but you, at, while you're trying to de-escalate the situation, you want to make sure that you have an exit strategy, right? Remove yourself from the situation if, you, if it's necessary. If your instincts tell you that you might be able to de-escalate the situation with a little patience and calmness, then you know don't say I understand, right? Or I understand how you feel because we would never really understand how someone feels and it never goes well, right? Um, but you might try something like, can you help me understand where you're coming from? You know, I want to understand why you're so upset. Um, if you already know why they're so upset, you, you may even say, you know, I understand that you're upset. I would be too. Um, or I can see that you're upset. That that would be better. Um, and But try to help them find a resolution. And now really, truly difficult people don't want you to analyze for them. And they don't really want a resolution. Um, there's something else that's missing that you may not be able to to give them. And if that's the case, again, you're just going to have to remove yourself from the situation. But if you're in a room full of people, you might want to say, you know, okay, um, I can see why you're upset, but it's important that we try to stay focused on the situation at hand. Okay. Offer them an out, give them an alternative to what they're already focusing on. Um, now, some people will advise you to say, you know, I'm sorry, or, you know, I'm not a big proponent of saying I'm sorry because you likely are caught in the crossfire of something that has, is completely unrelated to you. But it is okay to say, you know, I apologize. Apparently I've tripped over, you know, a nerve or I've struck a nerve with you or I've upset you. I've clearly upset you. I do apologize. How can we work to make this better? Because sometimes they just need to vent. And if it's safe or you're in a safe situation where it's safe for them to vent, let them vent, okay? And do your best not to take it personally. I know that's much easier said than done. But if you can try to remember that we're all difficult to someone else at some point in time, right? Even, even the best of us <laughs> can prove to be difficult or, or frustrating for other people at some times. And we don't really know where they're coming from. We don't know what sort of baggage they've brought into this situation with them um, or, or what it is that maybe specifically set them off. And so we try not to judge them, realize that we've been there and just, again, try to de-escalate the situation. 
<sighs> I hope that the information that I have shared in this video has proven helpful to you in some ways or given you some ideas. Um, again, we want to set our boundaries. Um, don't We don't necessarily have to always set them in stone. Uh, we reserve the right to be flexible with our boundaries, but we do want to be clear on what they are. And if they change, we want to try to make sure everybody's up to date so they know where they stand with you, because that's really going to help build trust uh, in the relationship and help avoid stress in the relationship. And that's what we want. We, we, we want a stress-free relationship. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> But as always, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. And if you have a specific question or if there's a specific topic that you'd like to see covered about relationships or about feelings and emotions and um, things of the like, let me know. And you can contact me at uh, mickeyallen.com, M-I-C-K-I-A-L-L-E-N.com. And I look forward to hearing from you hearing from you if you have any questions. And until we see each other again, be blessed. Mm -hmm.